Yeah. Augusto would like to see you immediately. Huh? Augusto would like to see you. Okay. Okay. In a minute. Okay. Excuse us a minute. Go ahead. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Filmmaker Ted Demi is here. Six years ago, his friend, comedian Dennis Leary, gave him a book by Bruce Porter called Blow. That book chronicled the life of convicted drug dealer George Young. Young is credited with being the first man to bring Colombian cocaine to the United States. Demi was so compelled by the subject that he turned it into his newest film. And here is the trailer. So this is it? No, not Bob. I'm pleased to welcome Ted Demi back to this table. Welcome back. Thank you, Charlie. Um, first of all, you, th just a true story. Dennis Leary says, look at this book, and oh, you yeah. said... Yeah, no, he gave it to me six years ago, and he goes, you're not going to believe this story. I mean, it's unbelievable. So yeah. I read it right away, because he's pretty threatening. Yeah. But uh, So I read it, and uh, I just couldn't believe the story. I'm an all-American boy. grew up in, you know, Massachusetts. Uh, high school football, yeah. all-American, the life of the party, Mr. Popularity. Right. Goes on to become Pablo Escobar's right-hand man. I was like, wow, I need to, yeah. I need to figure out how but that Man, there was some scene there where Escobar, he says to he couldn't believe that this guy, had that George had been able to distribute all that... Like dope. Th yeah, three know, days. Yeah, and th and, and he, I guess he said, you did this in 24 hours? And he said, no, three days. Three days, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, everybody else was talking about six months. I know, I know. He, there was a market for it. I mean, George... George is in the you know either the right place at the wrong time or the wrong place at the right time. You know he was in prison in '72 for smuggling grass, and he ended up in prison with a Colombian roommate. Right. And there's a line in the movie I think you remember that he said he goes I went into uh, college uh, jail as a crime school. You know I knew with a bachelor of marijuana and came out with a doctorate in cocaine. And like that's where they figured it out. Uh, interesting characters. Tell me first about Johnny Depp who plays George. Oh, no, before I go to that. Sure. Uh, where is George today? George is in Otisville uh, Federal Correctional Facility in upstate New York, and uh, went and saw him yesterday, and we had a little mini premiere, me, him, and the warden, yeah. Yeah, on a seven-inch monitor with so bad speakers. What did the warden say first? The warden was, it was really amazing. The warden really was touched by it. It was like, the last 20 minutes, as you know, are pretty, yeah. you know, emotional and pretty dramatic, and George, as you can imagine, was, you know, really hitting the Kleenex, and I looked over at the warden, and the warden was kind of yeah. hitting it up to it. But like, really? that's, that's like the dichotomy of George. It's like... You know, so many guys that, you know, on paper should really not like this guy really became fond of him. And, and that's, as a filmmaker, I thought that would be a great challenge, you know, to bring a character like that yeah. that was so multidimensional um, to the screen. All right, Johnny Depp, did it, was that a, a dream? A I, mean, dream. This, I mean, this guy is, <laughs> he's a chameleon, Charlie. I mean, you know, yeah. you've had him here. He's like, every movie he's done, he's become something else. You know, he doesn't just, it's not Johnny Depp starring in the movie, it's Johnny Depp as the guy starring in the movie. Like, Donnie Brasco, Ed Wood, Edward Scissorhands, George Young now in the same room, all the same guy. You know, he's, in, he's, he's an amazing human being, and he's just, you don't hire him to step on the line, uh, to step on the mark and say the line. You want him to give you input and bring it to you, because he's so smart. Yeah, he really is a smart oh, guy. Oh, man, you know? it's great. Yeah, he and Sean remind me of, there's something about their intelligence that always come through. I know. Well, you know, jo you know, Johnny and Sean, they've both taken such great risks with their career. You know, they, exactly they, they keep doing smart yeah. projects. And they get, man, these guys get offered the big Jerry Bruckheimer $20, $20 million movies, believe me. You know, and it's tough for them to turn those down because that's a lot of money. And they see contemporaries of theirs with a lot of cash. Um, not that they don't have money, but they've, you know, have to fight and do it a little bit, you know, do it a different way, so. Yeah, I think Sean jumped all over Nick Cage, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he got him pretty good, I think. Yeah, what he called him a performer, not an actor. Yeah. That yeah. one hurt. All right, let me take a look at a clip here just to get into oh, the tune of this. This is, um, first clip is where George and, and uh, Tuna meet Derek, who's played by Paul Rubens, which was a... <laughs> Pee -wee interesting, Herm. Pee Wee Herman, but a very interesting oh, okay, casting thanks. by you. Good, Roll good, 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 thanks. Hello, Tuna. Enchanté, George. Furby, he is yummy. He looks just like a Ken doll. <gasps> Ken and Barbie. Oh my God, it is so perfect. Traffic. Uh, yeah, they've got lots of attention. In, is that in, out in yet? Traffic? <laughs> <laughs> it made it, to, made it to the big screen. In a few top ten lists, yeah, I think. Right. I think it, yeah, and and the director did well at the right, Academy. Right, right. Uh, does that help hurt influence? What, you know. Well, I, I'm I'm hoping that you know I'm hoping it's going to help. Obviously, I mean I think the great thing 
about traffic as a film, you know, being in the drug crime genre that we're certainly in with a movie called Blow, um, you know, I think a lot of people went and saw that film because it was so well received. You got it, the word of mouth is so great; it made like a hundred million dollars. So a lot of people went and saw that film that traditionally don't go see films in that genre. So I think if they went and had a, a good time with traffic and really liked it, then I think they'll really be able to see our film and find something in it that's yeah. different but but compelling. Now, but is your movie about drug trafficking or is it really a character study about one guy and, 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 and sort of an American tragedy or an yeah, American I mean, story? Exactly. Well, I, that's what it is. I mean, I think our, our film is two things. Uh, one, it, it, it's historical. You know, it starts much earlier than Traffic did. It starts, you know, in the early 70s and late 60s. Um, it's one man's journey. I, I really do believe it's, it's the classic American dream gone horribly wrong. But at the heart of our movie, I really believe it's a love story. And it's a love story between um, a father and a son. Uh, and a son and a daughter, and, and what this world does to one particular family and how it destroyed this family. I want to show a couple of scenes like that. Oh, First thanks. is where George tells Pablo Escobar, who is now dead, the famous <laughs> Colombian drug uh, lord, that he can transport cocaine to the United States. Here it is. Right off the top of my head, I, well, I'd have to talk to Diego and everything, but let's just say roughly 10,000 per kilo. Mm -hmm. How much can you transport? Again, this is a language that I would have to discuss with my partner, but uh, 300 kilos, so that's, that's $3 million. Nick Cassavetes wrote the script? Yes. Nick Cassavetes and David McKenna, they uh, both mm -hmm. collaborated on it. I've had the project for about six years, so David wrote it, uh, adapted the book in the beginning, and Nick came on about three years ago and, and added a lot of the heart and soul to the film. We didn't find a role for Dennis Leary in this? No, no, he couldn't. Uh, no, he was busy working. He's got a TV show now and stuff, so he's a busy guy. Uh, what's the hardest thing about directing? Um, hardest thing about directing is probably finding the project that you feel passionate about and feel that you want to spend at least a year of your life on because you better like it, you know, and um, it, it encompasses your entire body and, and soul and mind and you better really like it. So it's, it's difficult to find a story that, that, you're, that personally compels you enough to make you want to do it. Show this too, because this this shows a relationship between the father <laughs> and the son that you talk about. I mean, here is uh, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta, who's playing Fred Young, and uh, it gets into an understanding of that relationship. Go. I couldn't stop you if I wanted to, could I? Probably not. No. <laughs> it's good. Got a family. It's good if it makes you happy. It's nice to have nice things, George. Soundtrack, what's on the soundtrack? Soundtrack is the definitive rock and roll soundtrack for me. Rolling Stones, Leonard Skinner, Marshall Tucker Band, Cream, Ram Jam, this brand new artist who's amazing, Nika Costa, who you'll definitely be hearing about. Um, she's on Virgin Records, and she did the end, the, uh, end credit song. It's beautiful. Uh, it's just a fun rock and soundtrack. All right, uh, Blow opens in theaters nationwide today uh, as we tape this on Friday, April 6th. So Take a look at your local theater. We will also hope to talk to members of the, uh, the cast of this film, including Great. Paul Rubens and, and Johnny Depp, if we can uh, lasso them and get them into <laughs> this studio. I'll help you. All right, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Ted Demi, the director of Blow. Thank you, Charles. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>